my name is Lena Forty, and I'm going to be talking to you today about the Interplanetary File System, which is a new internet protocol to upgrade the web and possibly replace HTTP. And I'm really, really excited about this topic because it gets into this idea that the way that we implement our technology really impacts us socially and politically. And this couldn't be more true than for the internet, right? The internet is basically like we use it for everything that we do right now. So what's wrong with the internet as it is right now? Why do we need a new internet protocol? So let's go back to the basics. In the HTTP protocol, when you request a file, you provide a URL. And the first thing in the URL is a domain name, which resolves to the IP address of the server that is hosting that file. So the client is initiating this journey through the network to go find the server where the file is located. And this is called location-based addressing. So every time you request a file, you specify the location of the server, and then you go to that server to retrieve it. And maybe this doesn't seem like it should be an issue. It actually kind of makes sense, right? But let's think about it in a slightly different context, something that's a little bit more tangible. So imagine that I told you that you should read this really, really great book. But instead of just telling you that the book is called Harry Potter, I tell you that the book is located in this one library on the sixth floor in the eighth row, and it's the second from the top to the left. So you'd have to travel all this distance to go to this one library. It might be on like, the total opposite side of the world um, in the hopes of finding Harry Potter. And when you actually get to the library, you may realize that the book isn't there because a librarian moved it or something, right? Books move. And there's also a really good chance that you already have the book because everyone has Harry Potter. So because I told you the location instead of the name, you made this silly journey to this library across the world for nothing, instead of just going to your bookcase to get Harry Potter. So <laughs> it's really silly. <laughs> but there's more. Um, another really, really big problem that's tied to location-based addressing is um, that it creates this system that is centralized. So if a file can only be retrieved by going to one single location, we have many users relying on one single origin server. So why is this so dangerous? There are a ton of reasons. I could spend all day talking about the problems with centralized systems, but I will just highlight a few. So the first really big problem is that it creates a single point of failure. So if there's an outage that takes the central server offline, the entire network loses their access to the information on that server. So several years ago, Google had an outage for maybe like five minutes in the middle of the night. And in that time period, 40% of total internet usage across the world went down. So that's crazy, right? A small group of servers goes down, and almost half of the internet stops working. So with um, the alternate distributed system, like on the right here, if one node goes down or one server goes down, it's totally fine because there are neighbors around that can help pick up the slack. Another issue is censorship. So if our ability to communicate over the internet depends on these centralized servers, it's very easy for the people who own these servers and the infrastructure that you need to get to the servers to use their ownership to control our internet usage. So an example of this is Egypt during the Arab Spring the government was able to totally shut down the internet because they had control of the cables going in and out of the country. So overnight, everyone in the country lost their ability to access the internet and no one was able to organize against the government. So that's really scary, right? Um, this centralized system is pretty much a great weapon for oppression. Another issue is impermanence. So we all know this error. HTTP error, error 404, not found. And this is telling us that we can't access the information we want because it's no longer at the URL, like in the Harry Potter example, right? We went to the library and Harry Potter wasn't there anymore. Or the location itself is no longer online, so the server went off for some reason. And this happens all the time, right? People move things, companies go out of business, servers go down. But when that happens, the content ex itself is actually lost. So this is really scary, too, um, because it's good for humanity to keep records of our past, right? Um, we want to be able to learn what, from what we've gone through. 
Um, but more and more, we are putting our records on the internet, where they are very likely to be lost. Um, and an example of this is that right now, 50% of the URLs in the Supreme Court decisions online lead to 404 errors. So, really bad. <laughs> so hopefully at this point, you are convinced that there's a problem with the current system. So let's talk about the solution. So I introduced to you the Interplanetary File System, or IPFS. It was just released in 2015 in Alpha. It's um, still being developed. And its creators describe it as a peer-to-peer -peer hypermedia protocol to make the web faster, safer, and more open. So that all sounds great, but how does it actually work? So we can recall from earlier that the root of the problem with HTTP is that it uses location-based addressing. So with IPFS, instead of using location, you address your requests with the content itself. So on the left here, we see the domain resolves to a location, and on the right, it resolves to a content hash. So how do we get this hash value? How does that work? We can pass our content through a hash function. And the return of this hash function is the hash value. And that's kind of like a digital fingerprint for our content. And if you pass identical content through this hash function, you will get an identical hash value. So for example, file A and file C, we have different file names, maybe different locations of the files, but they have the same content, so they have the same hash value. And content hashing is actually something that IPFS picked up from Git. Um, it's the way that Git keeps track of the changes that we make in our repositories. So now we have this hash key. How do we use it to retrieve our content? IPFS uses a similar system to BitTorrent. So you have this distributed network of peers, or a swarm of peers, that all stores files on their local storage and then makes them available for sharing. And they're all connected via this underlying network protocol. So if you want to find file A, you make a request out to the, to the swarm using the hash 123. And you are able to locate and download the content from the nearest peer who has that content. So that all sounds great, but maybe you're still not convinced, so let me show you in action. So I have this folder here with um, a few files in it that we can take a look at. The theme is my cat. My cat is the cutest. Here she is. Um, so the first two images are different file names, mycat1 and mycat2, but it is the same image. And the, second, or the third one is a different image. <laughs> She's so cute, right? <laughs> um, so I can add these files to my IPFS local storage and hash them. So I run IPFS add all of the files in this repository. And there they go. So you can see that mycat1 and mycat2 are the exact same hash because they're the same content. So now the files are available locally and I can connect to um, this swarm so that I can start accessing them in the browser. So I'm initializing this swarm. And it's now listening. So I can go to my local host, IPFS, and then I can pick up one of the hashes that I just made and put it in there. And there she is. And um, I can actually do this offline too because. The way it's working is I'm, I'm still in this swarm, right? And we are looking for the closest machine that has this content that I'm looking for, and that machine is myself, and I don't need the internet to talk to myself, so I load it, and it still works. <laughs> okay. So to recap, 
The internet today is location-based and centralized, meaning it has origin servers that can take down the entire network, and it allows for control of our information and means that we lose our information in the future. IPFS offers an alternative. It creates a distributed peer-to-peer -peer network with content-based addressing, and this makes the web faster, more resilient, and permanent. So hopefully this has gotten you really excited about IPFS, and if that is the case, you should go ahead and check out these lovely resources to learn more. Thank you.